All right, so before we begin, we need to talk about some words and understand their meanings. So first, a landscape is a picture of land. So we're gonna do a winter landscape. If you made a picture of the ocean, it would be called a seascape. But we're doing winter landscapes today. All right, and there's different parts of a landscape. The very, very tiny, far off in the distant part is called the background. And that's where you're gonna have the things that, that are the smallest and the least detailed, because they're so far, far away. In front of the background, you have something called the middle ground, and that's where things are a little bit bigger. They're kind of medium sized, and they are a little bit closer to the front. And in the very front, you have the foreground. So you can remember that by thinking the foreground comes forward, and that's where things are gonna be the biggest and the most detailed. And make sure when you're making your winter landscape that you have something in the background that's far, far away and tiny. You have something in the middle ground that's medium size, and you have something in the foreground that's very big and detailed. Okay, let's get started on our winter landscape. So I am gonna be sketching with a black pen, but you can use a pencil. I always think it's good to sketch with pencil. Okay, let's make sure the camera's good and ready. Okie dokie. Okay, so since we went to Norway, I thought it would be fun to draw mountains in my winter landscape, but you do not have to do that. And since we wanna make sure we have a background, a middle ground and a foreground, I'm gonna start my mountains up here. I don't wanna start them down here because I won't have enough space, okay? So when I'm drawing mountains, I make them look a little jagged. So I let my hand almost shake a little bit. And you don't have to make them all look the same because in nature, they're not gonna be perfect triangles, right? So there's some mountain shapes. And if I want, I can put some little jagged lines on them, kind of like snow is falling down their mountain. Have you ever noticed that the really tall mountains seem to always have snow on the top? All right, and then let's put a line back here snowy line. Okay, so there's that. And I'm going to start with my background and work my way to the foreground. So I have mountains in the background. Maybe I could also add some pine trees, but I know that they're far off in the distance, so I know I want to make them tiny. So I'm going to put some tiny little pine trees. They're so tiny. So it's basically like a triangle sketch with a little bit of texture lines. And I can put a lot. I can put some right here. And I know the closer it gets to the foreground, the bigger those pine trees are gonna get, right? Some little baby pine trees in the background. And while you're working, guys, you need to kind of plan for things. So you're using pencils, so you can always erase. But you need to plan. If you have something big in the foreground, you want to make sure you leave space for that. So I know I'm going to put a big snowman in the foreground. And you might think it looks silly because it's going to actually be probably bigger than the mountain. And the reason for that is that's in the foreground and the mountain's in the background, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and think about, I'm going to put the snowman here. Um, so I want to make sure I don't draw in those spaces. Okay, lots of little pine trees off in the distance. Okay, so let's go ahead and sketch the snowman. So I'm going to start by drawing some circular shapes. I'm leaving the top open. Does anyone have a guess why I'm leaving the top open on my snowman head? Yeah, because I want to put a hat on them. Okay, so those are just curved circles that are overlapping a bit. And let's put a little hat on our snowman. Okay, I'm going to give it a scarf that is blowing in the Norway winter breeze. 
Maybe we can put stripes. So guys, anytime you can add little details like stripes or patterns, go for it because it just makes your artwork more interesting to look at. Let's do some arms, some stick arms. Here we go, and some eyeballs. Little carrot nose, and I just did a little skinny triangle. I think I need some a mouth, so let's put some little buttons. Okay, hey guys, we can color this in later, but we don't need to do that quite yet, okay? And then I, in the middle ground, right about here, I'm gonna put a cozy little house, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to make one that looks um, three-dimensional. So we can do two lines. Remember, this is in the middle ground, so it's gonna be a little bit smaller than our snowman. Two lines, and then one a little further away, okay? And then let's do the top of a triangle. And see how this one angles this way? The back of the roof is gonna angle the same angle and then I'm gonna connect it. Okay, and then since it's snowy, let's put some like little wavy lines under it. Let's give it a little chimney so it can keep warm. Okay, and then how about let's draw a wavy line for the snow on the roof and we have some little roof shingles sticking out at the bottom. And then let's give it a front door How about a curved window? There we go. And then we can add, you know, other windows here. Maybe there's a tree with lights in the window. We can think of that when we add color, right? And there's our little house. Cozy, cozy little house. If you want, you can always add on to your house by just drawing different shapes. Look. There's a porch all of a sudden. Okay, so there's our little cozy house off in the distance in the middle ground. And I could add really cute little curtains if I wanted. I think I could spend the whole time drawing in that house, couldn't I? Okay, so how about, since it's a house, let's give it a little tree next to it. Okay, and I need to think about some more details. So what else could I add? Should I add a little pond that's been frozen over maybe? How about we'll do that? Little pond. And I can put, you know, some lines. Like snow's kind of settling in parts of it. If you want to put some cracks in it, you can. How about a little bit of brush is kind of poking out the snow around the pond? Maybe some rocks. <laughs> and I think our little snow friend needs some snow to sit on. Let's see. So guys, as artists, we just continue to look at our pictures and see what can make it even more interesting and look even more complete. I think our snowman needs a pine tree next to it, but I know it's in the foreground, so it's going to be the biggest pine tree of all. And I'm just kind of doing these little dash lines going down. And if I wanted to, I could decorate the pine tree. Like it looked like the snowman put up some decorations on their pine tree. We could do that if we wanted. So, let's see. I think I need another pine tree here. And 
and I can go back and kind of put little piles of snow here and there. So I think for now that is a good stopping point, but I can always add more, right? Okay, so let's check. So this is the foreground where things are the biggest, right? This is the middle ground where things are medium sized. And this is the background where things get teeny, teeny, tiny. Okay, so make sure when you're creating your winter landscape that you have a variety of things in your foreground, your middle ground, and your background. Okay? All right, have fun, be creative. Just think of things that you would see out in the winter time. I feel like I need to add some animals, so I might add some more um, as I think about it more. So have fun with it, guys. I'll see you later.